sit up straight. <laughs> Look at that. Terrible. <laughs> Your eyes are closed. My eyes are closed. What's going on with that? Well, I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, goodness sakes. Okay, we about ready. Got one minute to go, darling. Listen, we got all these people ready to come in. You start admitting them. No, I will not. Not yet. I got to get the record button and going. Ready? Yeah. Hallelujah. Ready? Mm -hmm. Gonna let them all in. Admit all. Here they all start coming in. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yep. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Praise the Lord for each and every one of you. We are so sorry we had to cancel last week, but we had a little bit of a family emergency and it could not be, it could not be helped. So tonight we're here tonight and we're excited about what is happening tonight because we're going to be talking about the heavenlies and heavenly sounds. And we're, we're getting ready to start our school of the supernatural. supernatural. Yeah. Yes. At our church. And we're so excited about it. And, you know, it's almost like this whole series of the glory has just been getting us ready for this. And we're just so excited. You're all here tonight. I'm excited. How about you? Yes, I'm excited too. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before we get started, I'm going to ask Robert if he'll open us up with prayer. So go ahead. Yeah. And please forgive me because I'm going to have to go to the door here in a few minutes. Well, so. if you do, you do. Let's not right. worry about it. But Lord, we just thank you right now for all those that have joined us tonight. Yes. Father, we ask you, Lord, that as we continue on through this meeting, that we'll have no technical flaws. No None. Nothing, nothing getting in our way. And Father, that Yay. your anointing and that your Holy Spirit will come here, Lord. So that yes, can, yes, yes. So yes. that we may be able to minister and teach the things that you have put on our hearts to do. And Father, we thank you, Lord, even for the extra week to study yeah. and show ourselves. And we food. did. <laughs> and Father, we just thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, and we thank you again for all those that are participating. We ask you, Lord, that many more come in and that we'll have an awesome meeting tonight. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes. And we're going to try and take some um, questions at the end. So we're real excited about this. So just join us and join in. And yay. I'm yay. just really excited. Thank you, Robert, for that. We just, I just really appreciate you. I have to turn the, what brightness. Do they call it? the brightness up. Yeah. I got to see it better. But tonight I'm going to open up with a scripture and Robert's got a few scriptures and we're going to talk about it tonight because I can guarantee with all my heart that you have heard the sound of heaven. Yes. I know you've heard the sound of heaven because it's in the earth as it is in heaven. Let it be done on the earth. Hey, Sonia, so glad to see you. She came into the chat. Sonia's from New Zealand, so we're real excited that she's here tonight. So tonight I want to open with the scripture out of the book of Ezekiel, which is one of my favorite books when I talk about the glory and I talk about the living creatures and I talk about the heavenly realms. Ezekiel is just, oh, when he's by the river Shabar, oh, glory to God. I just get so excited about it. But anyway, Ezekiel chapter 42 or 43, <laughs> verse two, it says, and behold, that means take notice, wake up, pay attention. Yes, that's what it means. And it says, and behold, the glory of God of Israel was coming from the way of the east and his voice was like the sound of many waters and the earth shone with his glory. Whoo, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And the earth shone with his glories. And so I'm just saying that tonight, I want you to recognize that the first scripture was that his voice sounded like many waters. <laughs> you know, it sounded like many <laughs> waters. So we're going to talk a little bit about the attributes of what the sound of his voice can be so that you can listen when you hear to see if God is speaking. We were at, um, where were we? I don't know which one we're talking about. We're, we were near Morningstar and we went to, where's the place where all the angels were at? Uh, oh, wow. Uh, drives me nuts and I don't remember. Yeah, it's been a while. But anyway, we Moravian Falls. Moravian we Falls, were at yes. Moravian Falls. 
And while we were at Moravian Falls, if I, on my old computer, the pictures are there on my old computer. They're not on this computer, they're on my old computer. But while we were at Moravian Falls, there, we took pictures and it was raining. Mm. And like today it was snowing. First took us to the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it took us in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and then we saw Anna Roundtree. Oh, I was so excited about that. But anywho, um, what I want to share with you is while we were at Moravian Falls, we started taking pictures. We started taking pictures of the rocks. We started taking pictures of everything. And when we came back and we developed some of those pictures, we noticed how many angels were there. But what was interesting is that during the time that the water, you could hear the water, you could hear the angels on the water. And so sometimes we just have to train ourselves to hear, to feel, to see, and to be a part of. it. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of training and it doesn't take much, but just a little bit of training because we have to activate our senses and we have to activate our desire and we have to activate. So before I get going Let's further- Let's go back to a little bit of basics on that. that like what? <laughs> like really how, how we figured this out because when I first got saved and stuff, I didn't realize what we were under sometimes when there was a song going on. Oh, some, true, true, true. So, sometimes or, or when the Holy Spirit was falling because they didn't really particularly talk about that at that church. They still love God and all that, but they, they just kind of missed that point, I guess. Well, we just didn't have the language for it. Yeah. Like when the glory movement was what? It's been like 10, 11 years. Mm -hmm. And it's been 12 years since we, the, since the bottle of oil has been filling here in the mm -hmm. house. And I want to tell you that we didn't have a language for it. We knew things were happening. And, you know, even in the Apostles' Creed, it talks about, mm. it literally talks about the things that are supernatural. And so the supernatural is natural because you're super and that's natural. <laughs> and that is the truth. You are supernatural. You are created in God's image and you are consuming the earth and you are moving in the earth. You have taken dominion. And when you take dominion, things begin to happen. So I'm going to let Robert give you a couple of his scriptures. Go ahead, Robert. Well, first of all, I also want to talk about those that may not be familiar with seeing the songs of heaven. This is my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, but if you're in a session, a worship session, or when there's something going on, and all of a sudden you feel this presence, and you cannot help but. Last night was a good example at church. Oh my gosh, it was I'm amazing! Up there, I'm last playing night. my drum and everything. All of a sudden, I just had to raise my hands, and everything just poof. The drums went down. And the chimes went because flying. Because I could feel the presence. The presence of the presence God was so strong, so, yeah. and the instruments began to shout before yeah. the Lord. They literally began to shout before the Lord. They hit the ground and the drum went off. The chimes went off. Oh, it was fantastic. But I'm saying that even though we have all these things, we want to give you scripture so that you can hang on to scripture so that when you see and hear things that you can look it up. So I'm going to give you another scripture. And let's see, I have a couple of them here that, I mean, as you can see, I've got, I've only got pages and pages of stuff here. Out of 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 6, it says, For the Lord had caused the army of the Armenians to hear the sound of chariots and the sound of horses, even the sound of a great army, so that they say to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. But that wasn't necessarily the case. That what, what the point of the scripture is, is that he caused them to hear sounds that distracted the enemy. He caused them to hear sounds that distracted the enemy. Therefore, sounds can go forth that can distract the enemy so that you can get the victory. And victory is very important in this day. I want victory now more than ever. Yes. I wanna see the church operating in the supernatural. I wanna see the church flowing in the kingdom of God. I want the kingdom of God expanded. I want the king, I want the declarations of the king to come forth. Why? Because everything else that's been over us has been trying to dominate us, but there's only one thing that can, and that is the King of Glory. What you got, Robert? Well, the first scripture I have for us actually is, is a Job 35. 10. Go ahead. And it says, no one says, where is my maker who gives songs in the night? 
Yes, he does. Sometimes you'll wake up in the morning and you'll have a song and you'll just keep singing that song and singing that song. That's because the angels were there ministering to you that song and they were singing that song over you. Yes, the songs in the night. Why would songs come in the night? Because during the day you're in the light, but at night, the enemy loves darkness. So he tries to subdue us and he tries to seduce us into negative thinking in the night. And the songs come in to give us victory. And I, and I can tell you from personal experience, even just more currently too, is just before I go to bed on my phone, I play a song that's actually touching me. My, my particular song right now is Holy Spirit by... Uh, uh, the one by Carrie Joby. Or no, the presence, you're welcome here. Yeah. Holy that wasn't Carrie Joby, Spirit, too. you are welcome here. I love that song. I love that song. You are welcome but here. But see, I shut that off. I shut off the lights. And you know what? I see sleep soundly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, because we need the sounds in the night. We need that. And I want to give you another scripture that is really important. In the book of First Chronicles, chapter 14, verse 15, and it shall and it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the top of the balsam trees, then you shall go out to battle. For God hath gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. Now, this is very important. I was out in my garden and I could hear a rustling in the trees. And I looked up and I remembered that scripture and I was like, Oh, God, wouldn't it be awesome if I could hear something in the tops of the trees? And mm -hmm. the Lord spoke to me and he said, you're standing by your chapel. And I said, yes, I am. And he said, listen. And I began to listen. Oh, that scripture, uh, Wayne, that was First Chronicles 14, 15. And so I was standing by the chapel that we had at the time. And I began to hear, and I began to hear music. And at first I heard Joanne McFadder, who we just love Joanne McFadder. We have been under her many times and Rob and I've been to school with her. It's just fantastic. And she was like sounding right next to me. And then coming from the East was Joshua Mills. I could hear him singing. And then coming from the West was um, Steve Swanson's music. And I was standing outside the chapel and I could hear all three of them at the same time. And they were harmonious. And I heard the Lord say, you are in a quantum leap of time where the sound is always moving. And you have connected to the sounds of three people from three different directions at the same time. This is how we are a conduit. But let me tell you, if I had not had the scripture about the wrestling in the tree, tops i may not have asked are you speaking i think another important thing that we need to mention while you're talking about this too is that when we speak something or sing something that that voice print or that yes goes out yes. and comes back and it's not always it may have been the song this time but like saturday this past saturday for me i heard something else that wasn't so pleasant that that reminded me of something that happened in the past i'm like because it was a confrontation because that sound was traveling around and it, it met back where, where, where it came from. So you gotta realize that when we speak and we sing, you know, that, I mean, life and death is in the power of the tongue. We've heard that probably a million times, but think about it. If we say something and we speak something, it's gonna come around eventually. Just oh, eventually like, to just someone. To someone. To someone. Someone will hear it because the Bible says, revile not the king, not in thy thought or even in thy bedchamber, mm. for the bird of the air shall tell oh, the yeah. matter. Yeah. So we know that the bird of the air is either the vulture or the dove. And I'd rather be in the presence of the dove. I just would rather have the dove. Yeah. And so today, when I was looking at the scriptures, here was another one that came out. Ezekiel chapter one, verse 24. I also heard the sound of their wings, like the sound of abundant waters as they went, like the voice of the almighty, the sound of a tumult, like the sound of an army camp. Wherever they stood still, they dropped their wings. Now, Ezekiel here is talking about the cherubim and the seraphim that 
you know, the four living, not the cherubim, the seraphim, the four living creatures that he saw by the river Shabar. Mm -hmm. He saw them, the lion, the face of the lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. And he saw them and they had the color of barrel. And the color of barrel is very important. When you begin to study the colors of the 12 okay. tribes of Israel right. and the color of the 12 gems that are on the walls that are in the book of Revelation. When you look at those colors and you go from one to the other that, you know, we have 12 months out of the year. You get that? There's 12 tribes. We have 12 months out of the year. So the first tribe starts with December, January, February, March. Okay, all the way up from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. It, the December is at the top because that's the end of the year. And in Hebrew, it's backwards than what it is in the Gentile. You see what I'm saying? So when you look at the gems, you're probably going to find what your gemstone really is. And you may go, oh my gosh, I really love that stone. I didn't know that my birthstone was pearls. And I have how many pearls? We don't even want to count them. I have so many pearls and God has given me pearls. They have fallen on the floor in the bathroom. I mean, I've, I've found them in so many different places. Why would he do that? Well, out of the book of Zechariah, it says he threw a multifaceted stone in front of Joshua. So if God's going to put a stone in front of Joshua and he says pearls of, uh, pearls of great price, there's no reason why he wouldn't release that from heaven that the gates of heaven can't be shaken. And so they are shaken. So when we look at the scripture and that the sound of wings, the sound of the four living creatures, he was in the earth by the river Jabbar, and he heard and saw the living creatures. They were there. They were there. And so when you think about that, you're realizing that heaven, eternity had invaded time. And in that moment of time, Ezekiel was in the right place at the right time to see the living creatures that go to and fro, because they do go to and fro. I was in the hospital and I saw them when I was in the hospital and Robert was working a job that was several, like over an hour away. And I called him up in the morning and I had all these IVs and all these drips in me and all this stuff. And I called him up and I said, you have to come get me. He said, uh, honey, I'm not coming to get you. He said, you've been really sick. You have to stay. I said, no, you have to come and get me. I said, I just saw the living creatures and one of the angels was in the window and he said, you're going home. And it wasn't like home to heaven. It was like I was going home. So I began to pull all the stuff out and all the stuff off my chest. And they came running in and they, they thought I had died and all this kind of stuff, you know, and I started because I knew of what I had seen that what it was supernatural and that for some reason at that moment in time, God healed me. And so they came in and I said, I have to go home. And they said, you can't go home. We took your vitals. You can't go home. And your results aren't back yet. I said, I don't care what you say. I need to go home. I'm going home. Within a few minutes, my medical doctor walked in and says, we don't understand, but all your records have changed. All your vitals came back fine. You can go home today. And I had called my husband and he's like, why are you calling me? I got to go to work. I said, because you need to come get me. He says, I can't stay home from work. And look after you I said you don't have to i'm going to go home and i'm just going to go to bed and i'm going to rest and i'm going to be fine because i saw the living creatures you see there is a moment in time when all of us are seeing something that sometimes we don't know what we're seeing is genuine we don't know if what we're seeing is supernatural, but the truth is you have all seen angels. You have all felt angels. If you see a flicker out of the corner of your eye, don't be afraid to look at it. If you see something in church, now I'm going to tell you in church, I see angels all the time because where the gospel is preached, ministering angels come in to minister unto the heirs of salvation. So when we pre, oh, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. When we preach the gospel, the angels come in. And so la uh, uh, not last night, it was 
was a week ago last night, we were in church and instead of seeing like orbs that were round like this, I was seeing them like this, like little halos moving across the sanctuary, across the top of the sanctuary. And I was playing the keyboard. No, I'm not a musician, but I am a worshiper. I can sing, but I can't play, but I can sing. And so I will say that these spheres were moving like this across the top of the sanctuary and the people were getting so blessed and I just kept watching and watching. And if you look when you're in church and the praise and worship is going up higher and higher, you need to look and see if you're seeing little round lights. If you're seeing lights on top of people's heads, I'm telling you, you're going to see them. You can see them because the celestial realm is real. Mm -hmm. And God is moving. Here in Ezekiel, we see Ezekiel has seen the living creatures. Now, you see, we only read about them, but God showed them in the earth, in the earth, so that they could be seen to confirm, this is important, to confirm what's written in the book. Go ahead. You got something there, Robert? I'll keep going. No, go ahead. Oh, he's got to find it. So, When I saw the living creatures, I was not the least bit concerned about it. I wasn't the least bit frightened. I was so excited that there was a move for me. And I'm going to guarantee you, I don't know if you've seen the living creatures, the four living creatures or not, but I will guarantee you that you have seen something that you will see and hear something that's in the supernatural realm. So far, we've talked about the sound of a great army. We had a couple come to church one morning and I hadn't seen them in years. I ordained them years and years and years ago and they live a great distance from us, but they felt led to get up before the crack of dawn and drive to our church and come in to see us. And when they came in, well, they didn't even come through the door, but when they got to the door, they saw soldiers standing at the door as if they were guarding a king Hmm. and they came in and they sat down and they finally said hey we've got to tell you what we're seeing you know and they came in to share with us that the angelic host had been coming in to guard us and to guard the move that we were stewarding at the time. And I want to tell you that these things are so real. You just don't know them sometimes, but they are very, very real. And God is moving in spite of whether we believe it or not. Go okay. ahead. Well, my uh, kind of was going to shift the gears a little bit here. Well, if you want to go ahead. Because, uh, well, we're getting back into some more scriptures about how the songs of uh, heaven that that we hear songs of heaven and how there's proof in the Bible about this. And it, it's actually uh, Psalms 43. It says, "He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see the fear and put their trust in the Lord." So when we're singing, yes. and we're out there. Th- th- this is why if if you would go to like a, a rock concert, say, and all of a sudden the the singer starts going off on really a uh, spirits are down for which i've seen it. a rock concert or are you talking about a worship set worship set but i've also been to concerts where all of a sudden the, the are you the, talking about a christian concert yeah oh okay yeah, yeah. Christian had concert. me worried there for just a moment yeah well they, they're kind of rocking roll. <laughs> yeah so and, and you get there and you feel that presence and all of a sudden they can't explain i remember listening to a, a spot on one of the christian radio stations and they can understand how this person was able to go into that because the person never done that before when he was singing. And uh, uh, I knew it was right away because I've been blessed to actually be in the spirit. And what actually got me saved was because of, I would hear uh, um, the Lord in a lot of, even some, some music you wouldn't say was tasteful. <laughs> but uh, I started hearing this stuff before I actually went and gave my life to the Lord about how, how the Lord is a, a worshiper and how, how, how we're supposed to worship the Lord because I always had this, kind of wonder about it and so the lord ministered to me through the heavenly hosts praise through, god through praise singing, god bands, praise god, praise god. To, and i love that stuff you know and he will like you've been every one of us if we're spirit filled and even if we're not you've been somewhere where something just moved over you you felt something you heard something you sensed something well that's the celestial realm that god is trying to show you that his word is correct now let me give you um, in Ezekiel, again, mm-hmm, 
chapter one, verse 13. And I heard the sound of the wings of the living creatures touching one another and the sound of the wheels beside them giving a great rumbling sound. What if, what if we tune our ears to when we're hearing rumbling sounds? What if there's a possibility that if we tune our ears to that, that we're actually hearing the living creatures, the wheel within the wheel? Have you been in a worship set? We've been in worship sets where um, people have, just, the drummers just start going, and they just keep going and going and going and going and going. It's almost like the wheel within the wheel within the wheel. And that is when you need to take notice and pay attention because God might be speaking. He might be wanting to give a message in church. He might want to be telling somebody something. He may want to be delivering gifts. He might be wanting to release treasures of heaven. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to miss when you listen to the sounds that you could be missing something so exciting that it could actually change your life. I'm going to give you some more scriptures. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Where was this one? That was Ezekiel. Oh, now I'm in Acts chapter two. And suddenly, boom, it was sudden. It was sudden. It didn't take time. It was suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were setting. Ooh, when the wind comes in, I'm sure. Oh, God bless you. Can you feel that? Yeah, I can feel it. Actually, Just stop and feel the atmosphere right now. Mm. Let's take a moment because I just felt a wind come right across my hand right here. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Take a moment and feel the atmosphere. Feel the atmosphere. Lord, let them feel it. Let them sense it. Let them be ignited, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When they were sitting there, heaven released a noise, a violent rushing wind, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Hmm. I mean, the Bible tells us this. And so the wind comes in, the wind comes in. Have you ever been in church where you've seen the candles get blown out? I mean, things like this happen, flickering lights. We had a word from the Lord one year. It was just before the holidays. I think it was actually in October. We had a word from the Lord in church that if you look into the lampstand and there was a flickering light in a lampstand, like if you're driving down the street, and you see a flickering light, like in one of the lights that are lighting up the street, look into it because it was an angel watching out. It's an angel watching out. I have a pole light. Let's see, what does it say? What does, I have a pole light flickering thing when you arrive in the cities. Yes, it happens. It literally happens. And so when we begin to recognize that there are signs and wonders among us, we begin to look for them. And we have been in a, a time frame, a time, a space and time where we have been so consumed with our flesh. And I'm not saying this to discredit anybody, but we've been consumed with our flesh. We've been consumed with COVID. We've been afraid of sickness. We've been afraid of going to church. We've been afraid, afraid, afraid because the higher ups over there put this spirit over the top of us to make us afraid. But God, but God is coming in and he's coming in mightily even now. And he is saying, look, I want you to shift things and I want you to shift up. I want you to shut up and shift up. And I want you to quit feeling so bad for yourself and shift up. I'm going to take care of it. We have to learn to trust God. And in the meantime, be willing, be willing to look for the glory, to look for the presence. On, on April 27th at Praise Ministries Church in St. Charles, Illinois, we will be starting the School of the Supernatural. That's at 1150 North 5th Avenue, St. Charles, Illinois. If you're in Illinois, we want you to come be a part of that school because we want God 
to move in your life. And we want you to get to the point that you are no longer going to allow the darkness of this world to expel you from the goodness of God. There have been so many opportunities that we have missed because the people over us have not allowed it to happen. So now we have to be strong, stand up and go and possess the land. Remember, he said he'd give you the very land in which you step. So step and take it. Hallelujah. You got another scripture there, Robert? Well, I'm just trying to put them into. Oh, okay. That as we go. Okay, here we go. Here's another scripture. And this is my favorite book in the whole Bible. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the book of Revelation is my favorite book in the whole Bible. I love it. Out of the book of Revelation, they had breastplates, the breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots of many horses rushing to battle. We were in a meeting with our beloved friend, Kathy Walters. And while we were in the meeting, she began to assess the atmosphere and talk about the angels that were coming in. It wasn't long after that meeting that Robert had an encounter with a chariot. Go ahead and give your, your testimony of the chariots. Yeah, I was actually coming home from work, that job that was a mile away. <laughs> More than no, uh, an, an hour, hour away. away. <laughs> yeah, an hour away when you were in the hospital. And, and I was coming back and uh, the, what, was, what was taught was actually resonating. Yes. You know, and because I really, really I believed it and I could feel I it. it. So I'm driving down a, a highway. It's actually Route 64 here in Illinois. And I'm coming up to intersection of 59. And I, and I remember Kathy saying, look into this light. So I look at I look uh, when you see a flicker. So I'm looking at the flicker and I see this chariot all of a sudden it comes down in front of me, a three horse chariot. And I don't know who was in it or whatever was driving it, but it came down. And then when I got home, that was when. Teresa was making a batch of oil and uh, um, I'm trying to think. And she actually had a gift for me, which was actually a chariot with three horses. Yeah. I had a painting for him. So I, I think maybe it was Eliza. By chariot, Robert Bartow. Yeah, yeah. By Robert Bartow, who is absolutely phenomenal. And I tell you, we have had so many glorious encounters because we chose to allow God to take us out of our comfort mm -hmm. zone, out of our standard three songs and the Hail Mary, mm -hmm. the five, <laughs> that's 15 to 20 minutes of message and tell everybody goodbye, we'll shake your hand at the door. We came out of all that. We made a shift. And when we made the shift, we, we got some people and we lost some people. We were talked about, we were criticized, and God was glorified. And we didn't care what people said because we knew that God was moving because we were seeing lives transform. Lord. People changed. Supernatural healings like we've never seen before. One lady, this is no joke, and I'm doing this because I'm pouting still all these years later. She's like this in church. Just, you know, oh, hello, God. Hello, God. She looks down. She's got four emeralds in her hand. I was like, how is that possible? You know, but she had them and they were beautiful. And God just came and brought her a treasure. And the treasures are amazing. The gold, the silver dust, the ruby dust, the sapphire dust. These things are real. Yes, you can hear about the people who fake it. But let me tell you, we've got a lot of politicians faking it too. So no matter from the highest to the lowest to whatever, you're going to have that. So let's not move in that direction. Let's not move in the direction of doubt and negativity. Let's move in the direction of our hope is in the glory. Mm -hmm. where our hope is the glory is let's move into the direction of the presence of God and open our ears to hear what the spirit says discern yeah yeah we got to put our antennas up and discern mm -hmm. and allow ourselves to discern now here is another scripture did you find your scripture I, I just did you find it though well I found a couple but it doesn't really tie into this right yet. oh okay all right okay so the breastplates were of iron mm. Mm -hmm. and the sound of wings was like the sound of chariots. When you hear this and see this, have you noticed that all the sounds at to this point, we are hearing wings sound like 
We are hearing water sound like. We are hearing rumbling sound like. We are seeing chariots sound like and more wings sound like because the sounds change. If you've ever had a celestial heavenly encounter, you will know that in heaven, it's not at all like it is on the earth. So all of you people who think that heaven is run by the judicial system of the United States, I got news for you. It is not being run by the judicial system of the United States. It is run by the monarchy of heaven. heaven. It literally is run by the monarchy of heaven. So when we get into this next scripture out of the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 55, for the Lord is going to destroy Babylon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he will make her loud noise vanish. He's going to make the noise of Babylon vanish from her and their waves will roar like many waters, the tumult of their voices sounding forth. Now, the reason I brought out this scripture is because I had a prophetic word and it was during worship uh, several weeks ago. And during the worship, it said that there was going to be, oh, she's got to go out. There's going to be a major move in water. We're going to see a big thing in water and people are going to say it's the devil the devil's doing this but it's not it's the spirit of leviathan that is under the water whose head's going to be cut off by god during certain times and god showed me this huge huge battle in the water and that he was actually going to win the battle so this scripture confirms what i had seen in the spirit so when people are seeing things hearing things, feeling things, don't be afraid to go look it up in the word. Look it up. Don't don't let anyone tell you not to look it up. Just look it up. Because we've got to have things soundly, doctrinally, according to the word, released so that the people's faith is confident in God. And you can actually use an app, like a Bible app, that, and actually type it in or speak it in. And say, oh, yeah, hey, I do it hey, all the time. What, what does this mean if, you know, if you don't want to go, or you can go into the, the, the glossary of terms, or you can have, uh, there's a lot of ways to look up these scriptures. I mean, like today, when I sat down this morning. Do you have a scripture there? I, I got several, but I'm trying, I got to wait to time in properly. Oh, okay. So, uh, it, so I, I, uh, I started tying the stuff together and some things and uh, I say, okay, well, the, this is good. And I'm listening to uh, Dr. Teresa. She's going through the stuff. I'm, I'm trying to follow along, but see all this stuff was revealed. And I actually went to old school. I went to the glossary of terms, started looking up songs. Of course. And of all course. Stuff because I said, you know, I've used my phone. You know, there's something about holding the Bible in my hand that helps me. Absolutely. Yeah. The Bible is everything. It's the beginning, the middle, and the end. Yep. That The Bible is everything. And we're Bible bangers in this house. We believe in the holy written word of God. I like to see some thumbs up from people on that one. Okay, now here's another one out of the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 4. And the doors of the street are shut as the sound of the grinding mill is low. And one will arise at the sound of the bird and all the daughters of the song will sing softly. Thank you for that thumbs up because the sound of birds can bring the voice of the Lord. The sound of a door. I don't know what it is, but ever since I came into this house, I have threshold prophecies. I'll be crossing a threshold and God will give me a word. I'll walk in the house and God will give me a word. I'll step over the threshold into somebody else's church and God will give me a word. I guess I just have a threshold ministry. I, I just don't know. But there's there's just something about that. And here it was talking about when the doors are shut at the street and the sound of the grinding mill is low, then one will arise the sound of a bird Hmm. when i mean the reason our place is called dove cottage is because in the morning the gardens are full of morning doves the first day i pulled onto this property the place was filled with morning doves 
and the name of our house became Dove Cottage. And it's like the doves, I mean, all last summer, the new morning doves, the baby morning doves, I was watching them grow. They're in my garden with me. I'm walking around them. They're not even flying off and being afraid because I'm in there. I'm either singing or I'm digging or I'm doing something. I go, hey guys, how you doing today? And they're still walking around waiting for me to dig up more so that they can scratch in it. I mean, these are, these are wild creatures that are making noises for me to let me know that God is at peace in my garden. And I think that's really important to look for these signs. They may not seem like much to some people, but to me, because I'm a fragile person, I am, I'm very fragile. I'm telling you, oh, her deck is full of hummingbirds. Next time, listen to what they're humming. Yeah. They might be singing you a song, Reverend Sophia. They may be singing you a song. And that would just be fantastic. But these morning doves mean so much to me that I've actually, I don't know how many times I've done it, but I have poured out a fleece before God in front of a morning dove on, our, on so many times. And God has answered it every single time. And so we have the grinding of the mill, meaning the end of the day gets low. The doors are shut. And then all of a sudden, the sound of a bird. Pay attention to those nights. Mm. Pay attention. I'm going to give you a testimony about some birds. My husband has his little fountain out here. Oh, yeah. They, it had does, that, they had the commission going on there. I am telling, I'm telling you, you what, if there's, I, I, I'm going to interfere. But it is. This, it's true. All of a sudden, they're just, they're, there's all different kinds of species, which don't usually get Including together. Including a hawk. And they're sitting on the fence. On the fence. And there's some in the fountain. I guess the ones in the fountain must be the ones speaking. I don't know. But, uh, and they're sitting there. And then, then when they're done with their little conference, they're gone. Yeah, it's, it was one day, it was super, super hot. And I mean, I think the heat index was like 110. In the garden, in his fountain, there were blackbirds, redbirds, cardinals, wrens. There was um, finches. The little finches, the robins, a hawk, and a squirrel. And the chipmunks. Oh, yeah. The, the, no, no, it wasn't one. the little chipmunk. Was it the chipmunks ones with the spots on the back? Yeah. Okay, the little chipmunks. They were all there taking turns coming into the fountain because the fountain was full of cool running water, and they took turns. Now, let me tell you something. In a normal day, there would be the blackbird would be fighting the robins, the hawk would be eating the babies, the long ones. I mean, they would there would be chaos because that's part of the natural food chain. But this time, on this day, they were all respecting one another to get water. Now, water always represents the Holy Spirit. Now, when you see in the scriptures, the voice of the sound of rushing water, water listen, yeah. because if it's a voice of rushing water, you could hear a voice coming through it. That happened to me. I was walking from my kitchen to the, into the dining room, and I thought my son left the faucet on in the bathroom, and I was going to tear him up because it's like, you know, it costs to have that water running in the city. Uh, well, city water is expensive. So I went in there, and there's water pouring out of the faucet with the taps off, and the voice of the Lord was coming through saying, here I am speaking, listen to me. That's what the voice was saying. And so I heard the voice of rushing waters and I heard him speaking. Now, if you look, and I, I think I shared this last night in service, if you look at people when they're speaking in church, like it's a revival, what, it doesn't matter what it is. Look and see if you can see the shadow of their words coming out of their mouth. I was here in my house on my computer listening to a powerful word and through the speaker of the computer, I could feel the breath mm. of the person speaking. And I'm telling you, it was real. Yeah. And sometimes these things, we don't think they're real, but they are. 
go ahead. Yeah, I've actually had the, the same thing with the with the notes as well. Is I've mm. been in services and I actually I think I brought it up once uh, on one of our Wednesday nights. Our Wednesday night seems to be really just like our Wednesday know. nights are glory nights. Don't, don't get me wrong, Sunday's awesome too, but Wednesdays is a hitter. A real hitter. <laughs> it's true. And uh, um, and and I started seeing notes and they weren't coming up like your normal notes, like you know they're on a straight line. They'd come up sideways or they turn a little bit differently as people were talking and singing. I could actually see. The notes i could see what they were singing and uh, i thought wow that's pretty that's that's pretty amazing and uh that's just when we started getting into some of the, the teachings of uh of uh, uh quantum physics and things that we kind oh of yes oh yes now i'm going to give you a couple more scriptures and then we're going to take some questions from you if you have any okay. questions in ezekiel 3 verse 12 it says then the spirit lifted me up and i heard the rumbling sound behind me blessed be the glory of the lord in his place you see when the angels are present they're there to help you worship god they're there to help you recognize that god is present so we cannot deny the fact that the angels are there now let's go um to Ezekiel chapter, I tell you, you need to read the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse seven. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone. Now, when I pray for people, I always cry out for the bones. I said, let the bone touch the bone, let the bone touch the bone, especially if people are limping and they have, um, knee issues, back issues. It's like, pray for the sinews, pray for the tendons, pray for the muscles and call for the bones to respond. Speak to the bones and ask them to allow Jesus to respond. You know, allow Jesus to have the, you know, for them to respond to Jesus. Because some, I don't know why I'm saying this, but somebody out there, you need to be healed and you're praying a prayer that is just not getting through. When, if you really need that healing, ask or tell that part of your body, you are free. Speak to that part of the body that it's Blessings free to, to hear and respond to its original intent, to its creator. Mm. Be, and you can see a change. I did that with my intestine when I was mm -hmm. in the hospital. I spoke to my intestine and I said, be healed. And nothing was happening. And I began to digress. And my spirit, I just said, Lord, I can feel that. And I remembered that the Lord's word said that he is moved by the feeling of our infirmities. And I said, Lord, can you feel that? Can you feel that? I'm asking to feel you feel that. Because if he's in me, he's moving all around in me. And so I said, I invite you to go to that spot in my body that has rejected you. And that's why it's afflicted. It's rejected you. And I don't know why that spot is rejecting you. My body somewhere is rejecting you. And I don't know if it's something that I did. I don't know if it was sin. I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. I just care that Jesus, you go and touch that part of my body. And my colon was healed. Why are you laughing? It is because it's true. She, she's flowering it up. No, but I'm she not. Says, Lord, how does that feel? You feel my infirmities? I, How does I that do feel? that now. You do that. You've been doing it for quite a while. But I do that now. And you know now. what? Within a, sh a short time, it starts getting better quick. I said, how does that feel? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I do. I do that. Now, I'll, I'll, I'm just being real. I hurt my back and I don't know what happened. And I went and saw my chiropractor. And he says, I think you got a cracked rib. And I was like, well, don't adjust that. <laughs> you know, because he had his hand on I go, don't adjust that. That's that's like hurting. That's not a good thing. And so I was driving home and I said, you know, God, feel it and heal it because I've had enough of this. But, but it was that, yeah, how does that feel, Lord, to have my back hurting? Are you enjoying that pain? I mean, I actually talk like that to God. Yes, Are you, you enjoying do. that? Now, I'm not telling you to do that. No, no. I'm just telling you that I have that kind of a relationship with God. I walk outside in the middle of the night, take my dog out for the last time, and I just tell God how I feel about stuff. You know, I, I'm just being real. This is who mm -hmm. I am, and I'm not saying for you to be that way. I am just saying that this is who I am. So when he spoke and behold, the rattling and the bones came together, I'm telling you, I went back in and I was laying on the floor 
And I said, you know what, God, I need to work out because I'm trying to lose weight. And that part of my back is hurting and I can't lift up a weight. I can't do a darn thing. And you know what happened? It popped right into place. And now I'm working out. But, you know, I kind of like had to remind God that his word said that he is moved with the feeling of his infirm of infirmity. And I mean, he had to move mm -hmm. over to the infirmity. It's one thing to have him in my heart. It's another thing to have him in my pain. Okay, I'm going to move on from that because we're going to get into something. And I don't want to get into that. That's another teaching. That, that's another teaching. <laughs> that's another teaching. Yes, yes. But that it's real. It's real. Now, I'm going to stop right here. And I'm going to let Rob share the scriptures that you have. I want you to share those with our, our guests tonight. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you can partner with us for as low as $5 a month, a dollar a month, just do it because that helps keep me in the Zoom so I can afford to keep Zoom and keep giving this to you mm -hmm. for free. Go on. Okay, do you actually want me to read all of the ones that I have? I just want you to share with what's on okay, your heart. Okay, well, this, this, this is what I think is actually really okay. something that... that that can kind of put like a whole thing on it. It's from uh, Ephesians 5, oh, I love the book 19 to 20 uh, through 20. Speak to one another with songs. Yes. And spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God, the Father of everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Well, I, I thank you, Um Reverend Sophia, because she said, I already heard from God to do so. And I believe he is speaking for us to partner with you. Thank you so much, because it's our partners that keep the website alive mm -hmm. and keep the um, the Zoom going here, because without the partners, I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. And I want to tell you, before we take questions, I want to share with you what we've got. This is the book, The Monarchy of Heaven. This book has been shipped all around the world and That's i actually really sent the first outline to her majesty the queen of england and she actually wrote to me and it's in this book about the priesthood and about her part in the royal priesthood and if you order this book it's on chicago faith broadcasting if you order this book we will send you a bottle of the glory oil for free and the book is $15 and this is 20 okay. and you're getting this for $15 and this is free. So we want you to do that because we want you to read about the monarchy of heaven because I had a conversation with Cal Pierce and he's coming on and we're going to be talking about the kings, the priests and the monarchical rule of heaven. And that's going to be in the next few weeks. So get the book. Okay. Awesome oh, you got another scripture. Awesome, yay, awesome yay, yay, scripture. Yay. Well, it's all awesome. Yeah, I know. Every uh, it's my favorite book in the Bible. This is actually Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah 49, uh, 13. It says, Shout for joy, O heaven. Hallelujah. Rejoice, O earth. Burst <laughs> into song, O mountain. Ooh. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. So yeah, we talked about being sick. Are afflicted in any way. Praying, it's not work. Maybe you need to sing at it. Yeah, yeah, really sing over it. Um, that's a real word because affliction sometimes, and I'm going to say this sometimes our affliction is not physical, it's spiritual mm -hmm. and it's mental, it's emotional. I mean, with what the nations mm -hmm. have been going through in the last couple of years with the COVID stuff, we've got a lot of emotional trauma. And right now your churches should be full of people that need prayer and need healing. There's just no doubt about it. And I mean, emotional healing, physical healing, mental healing, everybody is at that point. So at this point right now, we want to open this up right now for those of you that might want to ask a question. So please put in your questions. I just appreciate them all so much. I can fire off a few more scriptures too to talk about it while you're coming up with some of the questions there. Hallelujah. Anybody have a scripture or have a have a have a testimony? Hey, has anybody out there got the book Monarchy of Heaven? And can you say anything about it? 
Oh, the book, I will get that book for you right now. Just hang on just one moment and I will pull that up for you and I'll put the link in. Hallelujah, glory to God in the highest. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul rejoice. Take joy, my king. There it is. There's the link. In what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. <laughs> I can't help it. I, I'm singing all the time. Psalms 100, verse 2. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come for heart before him with joyful songs. Absolutely. Joyful songs. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. We get on these things when we're traveling sometimes. It depends if Karen's with us or not. We'll just come up with a or song. Or Patty. Or Patty. We'll just come up with a song. Of, oh, I tell you, we and, spent uh, <laughs> over an hour. One day, the four of us were traveling together, and we spent over an hour one day singing, just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, the medicine go down. Yes, we did. We did do that. Um, Karen and I burst out in songs. You know, we see something and we start singing. But you know what? It pleases the Lord, and it makes him so happy to know that we're willing to be happy with each other. And that's very important. So does anyone have a question at this time or a scripture? <laughs> you do have friends like us. So Reverend Sophia, you've got us. Hallelujah. And she says, I was looking for it because I was reading it and need bookshelves. So I stopped losing the location of them. You know what? Amazon has some pretty cheap bookshelves. I just grabbed some myself. And you know what? If go out and get skids. They're free. Build your own. Hallelujah. I was actually looking at that last night on Facebook. I, and how these people take all these skids and make all this stuff. It's pretty cool. Okay, we have someone with a new message. What is a skid? A skid is, describe a skid. What are you talking about? A skid, a, a wooden, wooden skid yeah, yeah, that some, people bring. A pallet. A pallet. You know, it's where. A wooden pallet. It's a wooden pallet. And they're actually really pretty good uh, wood, a lot of it's oak and whatnot, you'd be surprised. Oh, yes. And I just saw a thing on Facebook last night where this guy, are you listening to me? Yeah. He took, I don't know how many of them there were, and he stacked them up at his house, cut them up, and he made the most beautiful deck off the back of his house of it. Who is that? I hear a rumbling when you can feel it too. Wait a minute. Oh, hallelujah. Who said, I hear a rumbling and you can... Whoa! And there is no earthquake or trucks going by. So would that be? Yes! yes. It makes, yes, yes. I remember when I was hearing a song in, in the heavenly realm. And then when it went on, I went online, the mini destiny arising summit. And you, Teresa, was singing the exact words I was singing. <laughs> Whoa, that is phenomenal. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What does the voice of many waters sound like? I'd say more like it sounds kind of like, like water. Waterfall. It, a, a, a babbling brook. It just depends where you're at. Um, because uh, water could even sound like rain. Yeah, yeah, it, it can. And uh, so, yeah, I, I've heard that a lot. It's so soothing, even when you don't want to be soothed. I know. Just the other day, I mean, we went from 70 degrees. <sighs> to rain and to snow today. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. But I want to tell you, I decided because it was pouring down rain and I had finished my school because I'm in school for formulation. Though, let me just tell you, this oil is the foundation of my skincare line shipped all around the world. People just love it. It's called redeemandrenew.com. But anyway, I had finished my formulation school. I had finished the class. I had done my exams. I was tired and I was like, you know what? I'm going to bed. Hmm. <laughs> I well, did. It was like 1.30 in the afternoon. I'm going to bed. I've been up since six o'clock in the morning. I've already put in almost a full day. I'm going to bed. And I was listening to the rain pounding on the window. And I was like, Lord, it's so soothing. It's so soothing. You know, I didn't ask to hear a voice. It just was soothing. And I fell directly to sleep. Hmm. And I was so thankful for that. Um, 
Yes. Awesome. I hear rain sometimes when it isn't raining. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We had rain pouring. I got to tell this testimony. I've got a million testimonies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not kidding you. I really do. Listen, I've been in the ministry for 35 years. I've got oodles and oodles of testimonies. But let me tell you, I was in, a, in the church and it was a hundred and something degrees outside. And I was on the altar praying and it was in the afternoon. Karen, you're on here. You should remember this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Karen's on here. Hey, Karen, I just love Karen. And um, we were, well, I was in the church and I was laying on the altar and I was praying and I heard a noise at the door and I opened my eyes and looked and there was the landlord was there and he had the fire department with him. And I got up and I said, is there something wrong? He said, well, the fire alarms are going off in the building. I said, excuse me? He said, didn't you hear that? And I said, no. He said, everybody in the building is complaining about the fire alarms going off. No. And they said, there's a fire at the top of the roof. I said, no, I didn't say, I said, I don't hear anything. I don't feel anything. I don't smell anything. And he said, well, you just stay here. We'll let you know if there's a problem. So I went back to the altar and I was praying and before long the fire department was hosing the top of the roof because they could not find the fire and the fire on the roof was directly over where I was praying Holy Spirit, hey. they said that was where they heard the fire alarm go off which meant that the fire alarm should have gone off in our building and it didn't but they heard it and the fire department came. I'm telling you, I can give you testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony. I know a woman by the name of Betty Schaefer who was praying for all these kids that she was babysitting for. And she put them all up in the attic to take a nap because she had it all set up for daycare and all the kids, she got them all praying. And they were praying and praying through and getting baptized with the Holy Ghost. It wasn't long before the fire department showed up. And when the fire department showed up, they said, because they saw a fire on the roof of the building. And she said, that's no fire. This is all the kids are up there praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on up and join. A non-consuming fire. It, it, it is. It's a non-consuming fire. But these things happen. And if you would just turn on that supernatural, yummalicious stuff of God, you'll see it happen too. Yes, it's called the fire of God. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions? I'm excited. Yeah. Are you guys looking forward to the next broadcast when we try to get Cal Pierce on here and we start talking about the kingdom of heaven? Oh, I'm excited about that. Isaiah. Oh, yes. Hey, Tracy, how are you? How is everybody? Karen, it's so good to see you, darling. We are getting more. And, oh, yes, yes, yes. Doing well. Glad to hear everybody's doing well. This is oh, hallelujah. Sonia, you Sonia's from New Zealand, and I just praise the Lord for her. She's just a real treasure to the whole wide world. Hallelujah. I want everybody, if you feel like it, just undo your cameras and come on in and let's talk. Come on in. Just come on in. Come on in. Hey, Sonia. Hey, hey, Hi. hey. Hey, Tracy. Hey, everybody, just come on in. Come on, it doesn't matter what you look like. Come on in, sit right down. Let the glory of the Lord fly all around. Come on in. We appreciate all of you. Come on in, come on in. Yeah, we welcome you. We welcome you. Come on in, yeah, hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody tell us where you're from, hallelujah. Everybody on mute. Hallelujah. Hi, Regina. How are you? It's been a long time. Long time, Regina. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, it has been. <laughs> how is everybody? Look at them all coming in. Hey, Wayne, how you doing? Hallelujah. Oh, Come God, on I'm not in. The only guy on here. <laughs> no, you won't be the only one won't be the only one everybody just undo your cameras and come on in and mm. let's just have a glory fest hallelujah glory to god hallelujah 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 regina over your right over your right shoulder i want you to take and put your hand right back here over your right shoulder and you're going to feel something because there's an angel right there hallelujah <laughs> Can you feel it? Just feel it. 
feel it. It's like a little weighty thing. It's weighty. It's weight. Just go slow. Go slow. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to exercise your faith and go through an exercise, really so I want you to do this. I want everybody to just shake your hands off. Just shake everything off your hands and say, I want the world off of me right it's now. It's not going, Kurt. Just, just get it off. Get it off. Okay. Now what we're going to do, hallelujah. Uh, that's Glory you. to God. No, Glory that's the chin. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now what we're going to do is we're all going to just be quiet just for a second here. Oh, their computer. Ooh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Rob. With their computer. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the living God. Hallelujah. Ooh, now, up. what we're going to do is we're just going to slowly, slowly move our hands. And you're going to move your hands slowly, very slow, very, very slowly, uh -huh. very slowly. And you're going to move them until you feel like they're heavy and you can't move them any further. Oh, That's no, where you're right. That's where your angel is. I can feel the fire. Yes, ma'am. Are you supposed to feel? Uh, yes, you can. So you can feel a little it. tingling in the top of it your fingers. You can feel something warm. You can feel something cool. And it can just feel like your hands just stop. I'm trying to get that going, Kurt. Hallelujah. Okay. Usually if you click on it, they can see you. Mm -hmm. hmm. Hey, how you doing there? How you doing? Deshaun, is that your name, Deshaun? All right. Nice to see you. Okay, Hallelujah. My husband is so happy to see all the gentlemen in here tonight. <laughs> okay, now we're accessing those angels. Now, if you move your hand a little further, oh, there's one right here, right here, mm -hmm. right here. Just because you feel something, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can feel a tingling in your fingers. Yeah. Sometimes you can feel heat. Sometimes it's it just when you hold like your you, hands up anyway. Yeah, sometimes it just feels like you don't want to move your hand. He's trying to get me on, but he, he can't do it. I have to go to settings. I'm not going to do that. Do you, Who this. said that? Ooh, the fire. Ooh, hallelujah. The presence of God is so strong. The presence of God is so strong right here, right now. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. What are you feeling? Some of you are feeling something. Mm. And sometimes you're just sensing something. What is it? Somebody speak. My hands are shaking. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Who said that? Sophia. <laughs> Sophia, I'm going to tell you, your hands are shaking because you're supposed to write. That's encouraging. I, I'm behind in my books. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, you're supposed to write because the scribe anointing is being released. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Wayne, what are you feeling? The tingling in my hands and my fingers. Mm. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the angels are playing with everybody. There's no doubt about it. Karen, can you hear me? Yes. Karen, what are you feeling? Actually, uh, my fingers and the palms of my hands. I uh, feel like uh, a weightiness, like in here with a tingling. Karen, is your hand red? I'm scared. Yes. Yes, I want you to pray for people's healing right now. You have to change something too. Privacy oh. setting. Change. In the name of Jesus. Now yeah, speak oh up, Karen, so we can Privacy hear you. Setting. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for all the infirmities, Lord God. And I pray you bring healing to them. And I pray it manifests now in Jesus' name. I pray for the backs and for the bones. We prayed for the bones. I pray, yes. Father, that they're able to move freely, Lord God. I pray, hallelujah. Place, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Father, I pray for a, a, I pray for a willingness. Okay. A willingness to believe. Yes. A willingness to receive. A willingness to go forth into the world. 
baptize them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. A willingness and an obedience. For the Lord God is pouring out his love upon you this day. And he's sending healing your way. He wants us whole. He wants us healed. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you touch your mind. I pray for your mind, body, soul. I pray for a, a renewal of the mind. Yes. I pray for your spirit to be renewed. Oh, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, get back to to one in the special way that they need it today. Yes. Oh, yes. Deborah, we can see you now. Oh, I can't see you now. We have a new computer. We're trying to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, just go down and look at the bottom where it says uh, video. That's where it is. We can see you and hear you very well. Okay. We can't see. We see you. Oh, oh there we go. Lord. There Praise, is. The Lord. There Praise is. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, there was somebody that was at Nancy Ashcroft. Nancy, what were you feeling? Because I could see something on you. Well, I felt like um, something was being placed in my left hand, like an object, and then something in my right hand um, uh, tingling. Mm. Did it feel like a scroll? It, it may have been. I, I couldn't really tell it, but it did feel like it had a circular aspect to it, and it felt somewhat metallic. Mm. Ah, maybe it's a scroll. Maybe God's giving you a scroll, one of the scrolls from heaven. You need to read about the scrolls from heaven and see if any of it resonates with you. Well, I had an interesting encounter on that point um, a couple Sundays ago. Okay. I blew a shofar in the church, and then a woman came up to me afterwards who was visiting and said, I saw angels come in with scrolls after you blew the shofar <laughs> prior to the word being delivered. So I don't know. There, there does seem to be something with scrolls in this hour. Yes, I think so. It almost seems like some of the scrolls are being opened to give us new revelation. Now, Kathy Walters was on, what was it, two weeks ago, and she said that the, the angel of truth has been released and that it has actually been released even over the White House. And so we and listen to what we're hearing. I mean, the president, everybody says, oh, that he's not speaking properly, you know, because he said that Russia was going to invade the Ukraine. Well, Russia did invade the Ukraine. And he said there's going to be food shortages. And people are going, no, that's not true. That's not true. But if you don't have oil and you don't have gas, you don't have farmers in the field. Exactly. You see, and it's almost like it's almost like there's an angel there dribbling out of his mouth some truth to give us warning of things that are happening just ahead. And so I was listening to him and I was like, hmm, this is getting more and more interesting all the time. You know, so, you know, people say it's not true what he's saying, but some other things come out later and it turns out that he had an element of truth in it. So uh -huh. we need to be very, very careful. And I feel like those scrolls are being opened. Like there's, there's just a new fresh anointing to hear, to listen, to feel, to wow. see, to oh, be. There's a brand new anointing on that. Florence, what is happening to you over there? <laughs> Lovely. Just Florence, like, what is like it? I, I've got something. <laughs> on your forehead? It's like I'm wearing something, you know, just here over my forehead. <laughs> it's probably a crown. Yeah. <laughs> Florence, where are you from? Yeah. And my right hand, it's like I am holding something here on my right hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What about you, Laura? I haven't seen you in ages, just, Laura. <laughs> I felt when I think it was Reverend Sophia was praying. My ears were like popping. Beep, 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 beep. Ooh, praise the Lord. So I'm not sure. I've been praying for hearing loss in my family. Praise God. Praise God, Laura. Praise, praise God. Amen. Praise God. What about you? Uh, I, 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 I like to. Um, oh, yes. Please do, Deshaun. Uh, Father God, give us sounds from heaven. Yes. Give us um, sounds for your. Uh, uh, of your destinies, of your de of your destinies for each of us, for 
for the body of Christ, for, for our love, mm. for you, for our love to you. Our husband with her, the reason. Mm -hmm. Fill us with um, your, your songs. Yes, Lord. Uh, your heavenly songs. Yes, Lord. Lead us uh, in your in your in your in your in your intimacy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Intimacy, knowing you. Wait a while on the bars. Awaken our hearts, Lord. Yes, Lord. Awaken. Uh, let us. I think I will ask her about the angel. Let, let our spirits be one in union with you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen, and, and, amen, and, amen. And, and fill us with the fullness, with the with the all. Yes, with the all. You, with the all that you all that uh, yes that, that you desire. It's, uh, it's your your perfect passion. Yes, Lord. Oh, with yes. your joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's give God a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody said something they're going to ask me about an angel. Who was that? Oh, man. Okay. Oh, uh, for the last couple of weeks, we've had three angels in our church. Uh, and, and when you talked about the flashing light, Yes. Just clicked. We've got one light bulb that is flickering. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, okay, now I know what that is. But but Holy Spirit has given me their names and their assignments in the church, but nobody else sees them. <laughs> well, they can if they want to, but you know, many people are afraid. Many people are afraid. So we bind up a spirit of fear and loosen a spirit of, yes, of yes. joy in the Almighty yes. so that they yes. can see. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Lori, Laura, were you going to say something? I was just going to say hi to Ann. <laughs> but the ears popping, I, it just hit me that this is releasing the sound, right, of heaven. Yes. So I, I'm believing God is opening our ears to hear more. Yes, amen. 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 Anybody else have anything? What about you, Tracy? Jesus. So, Father God, just lead us into the essence. Tracy, into, I can't hear you. There we go. Lead us to your I mean, okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you now. Oh. I, I feel something in my abdominal area, and I get that a lot when I'm praying in the spirit, where I feel like I'm moaning and groaning. That's good. Like a birthing, I guess. Um, yeah, that's what I, I, and I get that a whole lot, so. That's really great. You probably have great abdominals. Oh, I should. <laughs> It'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I keep telling the Lord. I said it. I told him. I said I keep doing it. You know, I keep doing this a lot when I'm praying. Yeah. I don't have a six pack. You know. Right. Right. But, you know. But I have yeah. asked him for one. Right. And not and not a six pack of Pepsi. Oh. <laughs> I I have a friend. Um, she's from Iceland, but she lives near me. Uh -huh. And we went driving around That's the right. county that we live in because I felt that we we're supposed to do um, like a drive by prayer, you know, yeah. around the county. And we did that yesterday and it got to the point, I was like, uh, you may have to drive because it got so strong. And a lot of times when I get it, I just, um, I can't contain, I just start crying and weeping. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, okay, Lord, I don't understand all of this. What's going well, on? Sometimes intercession, when we're doing it, we don't need to know. We just know that the Holy Spirit needed mm -hmm. a vessel. You see, this is what a lot of people get confused about because a lot of people are like, why am I praying if God already knows the answer? You know, people do think that, but the truth is, is that God needs someone to pray because we're praying about the things in the earth and he needs a sound print in the earth for the prayer. 
Okay. He needs that prayer to go through. So when you feel like you're groaning and moaning, let God just do it because there's travail going on for someone or something that we don't need to know about. Okay. We just need to be obedient. Anybody else? What about you, Anne? How are you? Fine, thank you. I, I walked in and sat down and the air was so thick. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And my, um, yeah, my left palm immediately was reacting, but then my right too. And uh, I felt like I was sitting in a cool fire. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, cool fire. That's, that's, that's a new one, but I like it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. What about you, Deborah? What are you thinking? You have to unmute, hon. Where your picture is up the right. There you go. You're unmuted. Oh, now I can't hear you. No. You can you hear go. me? Yeah. yeah. Um, Oh, um, the other day, um, I was not feeling well, and the journey has been from Lyme's disease, where I think I'm totally healed, and then I get very weak, very ill, and we had been six months in uh, South Carolina at the Marine Star Ministries. Mm -hmm. There for six months. We came back to Illinois. This is where we live, and I was doing pretty, like, getting better and better, you know, but then I had these crashes, so anyway. Um, this particular week, when what comes over me, I get really weak and I just feel sick. So I go to my bedroom and lay down. But that day, as I lay down and I'm facing the window because I like to watch the birds and the doves also. And I saw a, I'm laying there looking out the window and from behind a white light, mm. I could see a flash of white light went through. Mm. So as we talked today, I'm thinking that must have been an angel because there were no lights on I mean, and there's trees. I mean, there was nothing for that light to come from. Mm -hmm. The window was in front of me. It would have come this way, but it was from behind me going to the window. So I think that's encouraging that I should just call on those angels perhaps and, and um, battle for the total healing or, you know, get up and fight again. And what happened was after that happened, the strength came back and I was able to go on and do the rest of my day chores and stuff. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's no fun. No, you have, you, have you met people? Who've, yes. Uh, yes. And it, it's no fun. So we pray. Let's Lord, all Lord. agree together in prayer. Lord, Lord, Lord we pray Lord. about this Lyme's in disease, the about these cells Lord. that keep responding to what the tick has done. In the in name Lord, of Jesus, Jesus, we ask you, God, we invite Thank you Jesus. to touch those cells in her body that bring Lord. that weakness, that bring that pain, that Lord. bring that tiredness, the, the chronic fatigue, and how easy yes. she gets infection. In the name Lord. of Jesus, we ask you to boost the immune system we ask you to strengthen her countenance we ask for the blood to be cleansed by the blood of jesus oh, that's it Lord, we ask you god to move in her body we invite you to touch every cell and corpuscle in her body and the red blood cells to become stronger and stronger in jesus name amen oh amen Amen. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's no fun. It's just no fun. Does anybody else have a question or anything else somebody would like to say? Uh, uh, Father, lead us into your throne. Lead us into the heart of where you want us to abide with you, to dwell in you, and imprint, fill us with the uh, with the with the greater awareness, yes, Lord, of who you are, of, of who we are with you, of, of who you want us to be, uh, and of who we are, with you as. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He keeps cutting out, but praise the Lord. Well, that's going to be Maybe our Sonia, had Sonia. Did you want to say something, honey? Um, I just let me pray because I've got someone who dissociates into different frequency of herself, and it's really taken a toll on my strength and beha with her behavior and stuff. And um, she's staying with me, and she's got COVID, and that's why I've had to isolate. But I'm battling. But I know the Lord is always with me, but I'm just really struggling to deal with it at the moment. But um, so please. you're having you're being attacked by someone else? No, she's a young girl who's a, a has um, DID, dissociates some different parts of herself. She's had a trauma, and she goes into different fragments of herself, mm. and that's. Um, She's fighting for her life, basically, but and she has a, one of her fragments of herself does witchcraft, mm. and it's kind of a bit, and she sees a lot of stuff in the spirit, and um, which has really taken a toll on her, but it's also taken a toll on us because I have to hear all the stuff in the background, but I'm really praying, but I know the Lord's got it, but it's just the tension of all the spirit stuff going on in the spiritual realm around me. Well, Lord, we pray for Sonia right now. And we come against every spiritual attack. We ask you, Father. Karen, I just saw you. Karen, pray. I didn't know you were still on. Karen has a gift for this. Karen, pray. In the name of Jesus, we bind up all the workings of witchcraft. We command you to step aside. You will not hinder or touch this woman's mind. I pray for clarity of thought. I clear clarity of thinking, Lord God. And I pray for the joy of the Lord to touch her. I pray, Almighty God, that everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes, Sonia, your face is already changing. Hallelujah. This is what I feel like we need to do. On the count of three, I want everyone to slap their hand. And when you slap your hands together, we're going to break this thing off of her. Are we ready? Yes. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Gone. Gone. Yes. How do you feel, Sonia? I'm a lot better. There's more Emily, the one that's in the background, but with so, but I feel a lot better that um, whole, um, I don't feel so um, heavy. Praise but... the Lord. Let's all praise the Lord. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Thank you know, you deliverance and healing is the children's bread, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You know, so I'm not sure how Emily's feeling, yeah. but she went into her room because. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Well, we are at time. We kind of like went over our time, but it was really worth it tonight. And we will be on again next week. And I think we're going to continue with the sounds of heaven. How many of you would like to do that? Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Oh, yes, please do. Okay. This is yes. Isaiah 55, 12. It says, you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we are planted by the water. Hallelujah, hallelujah, everybody. Walk with the king and be a blessing. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.